Hey there! Boys and girls, today I have for you something I would say truly special, and that is a Parker Jewel Fold, the flagship model of the Parker brand. But it's not any Parker Jewel Fold, it is the special commemorative Ackermann Jewel Fold. Now, I'm not going to tell you the entire story of Ackermann because it's very long and it's on their website, but uh, Ackermann in The Hague, the fountain pen specialty store, still there, was established in 1910 and uh, they introduced their own line of pens at some point which were based on the Parker Jewel Fold model. And in uh, 2010, uh, when they were in the, the Passage, it's a, um, a, a covered shopping area, so it's, it's sort of a, a street, it's covered like a mall, one of the oldest malls in, in the Netherlands. They're still there, the shop is still located there when they were there in, in 2010, so 100 years, they launched this pen. It's a set ballpoint and fountain pen, but they also sold fountain pens separately, and that's the set I got. Now, it's not just that pen, the nib is also quite special, so I think this will be a fascinating review. Here we have the box. Now, this box is extremely heavy and can be used in an emergency for hand-to-hand -hand combat because this is serious, serious weight. Black sleeve, and then there is a black cardboard box. You open the cardboard box and then there is a wooden box. So this all should kind of tell you that you are buying a pretty luxurious pen and also the eye for detail in all of this I think is staggering. You have this little popper button to open the box and in the cardboard sleeve is actually, and now we can see, ah, oh, there we go, is a rubber cutout to make sure the little button doesn't poke through the cardboard. So that's just the box, all right? Now on this shiny wooden box is a plaque and the plaque says Parker Jewel Fold Limited Edition, PV Ackermann, 1910 to 2010, 100 jaar in the Haagse Passage. So 100 years in the Passage in the Hague. Um, this box pops open like that and it's, it's a very pretty box. Uh, soft lining and then you have the pen. I'm just going to take out the pen tray. I'll show you uh, the pen in a second, but first I want to go through the other stuff you get in the uh, um, box. Uh, first of all, there's a little polishing cloth, which I think is very cool. Uh, then there is a, I'll show you that in a sec, there is the little Parker booklet. Uh, you would get this with a whole bunch of Parker pens. This is not so special. Uh, you get a little box of Parker cartridges. I use a bottle, but you can also get the, you, you can use the cartridges. And all of that fits in there, and there is one of those little ribbons, which I always find extremely funny because I'm basically a child. Uh, you have this little thing where you can pull it, and then the stuff all comes out. And there's even these little um, guiders to make sure that you won't accidentally open it too far. So the box alone is very luxurious and I would say befitting of such a, a, a jubilee pen. Then it comes with this booklet which is actually a very nice full color booklet uh, in Dutch so if you are uh, if you're not able to speak Dutch that's a pity because then you can't read it but it, it gives you the the full history of Ackermann uh, and mainly the the, 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 the pens so um, I think the, the the text of this, or at least a very similar text, is also on the website, so you can check it out there. Uh, but it's it's the history of the shop and such. I think it's it's very neat. It's also a high quality publication. It's it's very nice, smooth, uh, glossy paper. And there are filling instructions for the pen, illustrated of course with the Ackermann ink bottle. Uh, you can so it's it's really neat and it has a warranty thing, and of course it has the. Uh, uh, which number of the pen you got. There were 91 ballpoints, 1910, so 9-1, that's when the, uh, the, the shop was uh, established, and there are 201 fountain pens, so 2010, 201, 0, etc. Uh, and here we have the pen. It's based on the Jewel Fold Centennial, so that's the bigger Jewel Fold model, and I think this is very, very pretty. Now, Sorry for this very lengthy introduction, but now we're going to look at the pen. And as I said, this is not a regular jewel fold, it's a special one, so some things are different from the regular jewel fold lineup. Time for a sip of tea. 
And then I'm going to cover the parts of the pen, I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll do a writing sample. At the very top of the pen, uh, that is not the regular finial, uh, you can see that this says Ackermann 1910 to 2010 and The Hague. And there is a little bit of a uh, well, uh, symbolism going on there, because you can see the circle here and then three arms. That resembles the three arms of the passage, the little mall Akamai is located in. So they have really put that in the pen, which I think is very cool, it makes it unique. We have the clip, of course the standard arrow clip Parker uses, and no less than three gold rings. Three gold rings to set it apart from uh, most other uh, jewel folds, which have one, or maybe two. I'm not a jewel fold expert, as someone who knows what they're talking about. Um, so they have it. Uh, I like this. It, it tapers down slightly, then you get the barrel, and of course the most interesting part of that is the uh, blind engraving there. I don't know how well you can see that. Uh, it's always difficult in the light, but believe me, it says P.W. Ackermann, P.W. Ackermann, 1910-2010 and Den Haag for The Hague. And then in a, uh, a little scroll work is the number of the pen. And what I found really interesting, these things are almost sold out, is that I got number 51. And if you're talking about Parker, then I think that's a pretty cool number to have. Because, of course, the Parker 51 is a legendary pen. Um, and that's it. There is also the uh, year code, in this case 110, probably II, or is it a Q? Uh, I can't make it out, guys. I have to check that. But in any case, it's right there on the blind cap. It's not really a blind cap because the cartridge converts to filled pen. And then you have Parker and the Parker logo in France at the bottom there. So you have black, orange, black again. The cap unscrews. Now I have a pretty special nib on this. This is not the nib the pen came with. I went into Akamam. I was talking to Paul. Paul is a very dangerous person to talk to because he will show you all kinds of magnificent pens and he knows a tremendous amount about pens. He would be able to tell you from the top of his head if normal dual folds have one, two, three, seven or a million gold rings. And and we were talking about stubs, stub nibs, and he said, oh, if you're looking for stubs, I may have something. So he scurries off to the back, he's rummaging around in drawers, and he comes up with this. Now, this is an old-fashioned, so pretty much, I think you can say vintage, uh, or at least currently not available and discontinued, dual fold stub. So it's a nib unit uh, that has a stub in it, um, and although I say stub, Maybe it's better to call it italic, because it is a very crisp, uh, really nice line variation inducing nib. Uh, it is, of course, 18 karat. It says dual fold Parker 18K750. It has some scroll work on it. It's a nice two-tone nib and a large nib. And I had to get used to it a bit, because it is a very crisp nib. But once it writes, it is magnificent. It's a lot of fun to fiddle around with this. And you'll see that in the writing sample. Again, black section. Uh, I like it when the barrel and the section have the same material, but here I think this black works, because again you have black, orange, black, which I think is a... it, it, it works. It's a very nice balance. Of course you have a nice little gold ring again there, as well as at the top of the section. Section tapers up and then flares out a bit. And as I said, simple filling mechanism. It's a, a converter cartridge converter filled pen, so either you put in a cartridge or you put in a converter, converter comes with the pen, and nice touch, gold there, and gold on the converter. So again, you have a balance here of black, gold, bl gold, black. So, th the amount of eye for detail in this pen, I think, is staggering. It's really, really nice. Uh, the dual fold also has a really nice size. Uh, I um, happen to have right here a Pelican M800, you can see it's about that size and a lot of people really like the M800 size. A bit big but not overly huge, not an oversized pen, just very comfortable to use. The section is very comfortable, it's very hard, it's it's a, a hard material, not rubber, it's plasticky, but I, I haven't found this go s slippery on me or something with, with when, you, when you sweat a bit as you write. I think it's really neat. So I like all that about all of that about it. Other things about it I don't like. Well, 
it's a limited edition pen that means you pay more you know that's the case you know that when you purchase it so I don't think that's necessarily a very bad thing but I mean it's not a $20 pen then again it also writes beautifully and especially if you're able to get a slightly more fancy nib like this stub on there that was added without extra cost I think that is a very cool uh, thing because it just makes the pen even more special and a joy to use so I have been thinking quite hard about things I don't like about it but I really think it's a very neat pen and I'm, it's not that I'm not trying to be critical if I would say something I would say it gets very big when you post it so I wouldn't really post this pen I think it's very neat uh, the, the, the worst thing about this is that they're pretty much sold out so if you want one hurry up immediately and see if there's still one available uh, having said that I think this is a very cool pen I've blabbered on for way too long so let's see how it writes I won't give measurements measurements will be on the website find the post that goes with this review sbrebrown.com uh, you'll see measurements there as well as high resolution pictures of the pen and the writing sample I've done thanks a lot Paul thanks a lot for convincing me to buy this there wasn't that much convincing necessary I think uh, and definitely thanks for the extremely cool nib hope this was useful so far and I gladly see you later. Bye bye. Okay, so here we go with the Parker. Oops, it skipped, and that was because the paper was not actually on the uh, cardboard. Let's do that again. The Parker Duo Fold. I'm just going to call it Ackermann. Uh, and the nib, well, that's uh, an italic and the ink I think is uh, Ackermann Royal Blue. Uh, my initial experience with the nib was that it was a little bit hard to use. Uh, it's, it skipped a bit on me. I think I had to get used to the exact angle. This is not a forgiving nib and also uh, it had been in the store for a while so I also gave it a really good cleaning and I think that that has helped significantly. Now let's uh, have a look at this. You can see how crisp it is because the uh, the distinction between the fine lines and the broader lines especially if I hold it at this angle you can see that that's really pronounced so it, it doesn't have very rounded off edges they're really quite uh, sharp and crisp which makes for a nice line variation and good writing experience I think okay this is fast writing always a bit hard with these nibs because as I said they're not so forgiving so if you don't align them well you'll get skipping that has nothing to do with the nib or the feed but just the way you have misaligned the nib on the paper but as you can see it keeps up really well there was a little bit of a skip there but I, I could have caused that now let's look at some the, the wetness Uh, it's a, a nice writer, not excessively wet, I would say it's pretty well tuned. Now, because it is an italic nib, you get this line variation, uh, which goes from really thin to quite a bit broader. Maybe when you break it in, that, that crispness will disappear a little bit, a little slightly less pronounced variation, but uh, fresh out of the box, it's uh, like this. This is no pressure, you can see there's a really nice uh, variation there were you to apply pressure you can see it starts to railroad but you can squeeze out some line variation that is no pressure and pressure uh, but I, I definitely not a, a super springy nib or anything uh, the cool thing about this is that you uh, I was going to do some calligraphy but let's do some you can turn it around and you get a slightly finer nib but with an italic I, I wouldn't really turn it around I don't think that, that adds a lot um, I won't make it much finer so the cool thing about this is that because of the shape uh, you can definitely use this for calligraphy type purposes which is kinda cool let's do a, uh, a gothic D to end there So, a lot of fun, and it took me a bit of time to get used to the nib, but I think it's it's ended up really, really cool. So, I really like it. I um, hope this was useful, even though this is a pen that you probably won't pick up very easily because it was limited, and I, I, I know there aren't that many left, but 
I think it's fantastic. So I hope this was useful. Hope you had some fun watching this, and uh, I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye.